Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for an Unreal concept, a simple pause menu. The goal of this video is just to show you a simple way to take control from the player, pull up a menu so that way they can interact with some options, and then to give it back to the player. Now let me show you what I mean. If I hit play, I have my character. He can walk around, he can move, he can jump. Everything's good. We'll hit the P button for pause. I now have mouse control. Using the keyboard, I no longer can move my character. And using the right mouse button, I can no longer rotate my camera. We can go ahead and hit the P button again, which is my pause button. It closes my menu. I move my character again, and we're good. We can hit the P button again, interact with any buttons if I wanted to, and hit OK or cancel, and we're able to move again. And it's all working seamlessly. So let's look at how this works. You notice I have a few files here. Unfortunately, to do this thing simplistically, but easy enough to rep, um, keep as open as possible and easy to reuse, we are going to have to use more than one simple file. We're actually going to have to hook into the character, and we're going to have to have a blueprint interface to make things generic. And then we'll have to have a game mode to keep it... Well, technically we don't need the game mode. The game mode's here, so I load up my special character. But let's walk through everything. So we have our menu, and our map does nothing special. Our character controls our user interface. Down here, these are the controls that come built in with our third-person character. We can ignore that. What we care about are these here. These are our controls basically to handle when we push our input button, which I called pause button, and then to either display a widget or to hide the widget. Well, technically get rid of the widget. We're destroying it. So that way the menu is either on the screen or off the screen. In addition to that, we handle input from the camera, whether we should or should not be able to move the camera, as well as if the mouse is enabled or not. And then all this stuff is passed to the blueprint and then the blueprint passes it back to the character. And we use the interface to keep things as generic as possible. So let's actually walk through the workflow. First thing that happens is our player hits the pause button. Well, pretty simple. Once they push the button, we're going to check and see if our widget is valid. This is a good way to safety check if something is actually good and on the screen. And we could use an if. For example, we could use a, a boolean down here, for example, called pause menu. And we could get that, whoop, not get, if that. And then if the pause menu is open, then we know the pause menu is open. And if it's false, then we know it's closed. And then we have to set the pause menu boolean somewhere in here. And we have to keep track of that. Or, since we know we are using a blueprint widget to either show or, well, we're using a blueprint widget. It's either going to be valid and shown on the screen, or not valid and not shown on the screen. As long as we keep track of the widget and take care of it properly, we don't have to worry about the state. Our state will be whether or not we have a valid blueprint. So what we're doing is we're checking if our pause menu reference, our reference to that blueprint, is valid or not. If it is, that means it's on our screen. The first time we do this, it's not going to be valid. We actually have never done anything with it. It's invalid. It's an empty object. Empty reference, uh, uh, null. We're going to go in and we're going to create a new widget. And all this is going to do is create our pause menu. Our pause menu is pretty simple. I just hooked up an awesome pause menu. It really does nothing in here. It just handles control, which we'll cover in a second. But it's just a pause menu. It's a simple widget that shows stuff. After we've created it, we make a reference. This is what is going to control whether we have a valid widget on our screen or not. And then we add it to our viewport. After we've added it to our viewport, we're going to go ahead and set our input mode to game and UI. Now we want to do this for one main reason, honestly. We set it to game and UI so that way we can still get player input. We can still get the player pushing the P key for the pause menu, for example. But we also get the UI mode so our mouse interacts with the UMG. An issue you run into if you're just going to go and do this is the player will still be able to move. 
which is what we have a disable input node for. This is a great node because we pull in our controller and then we ask the controller who it's controlling and we plug that in and now it will disable input given from that controller to that pawn. So basically our character no longer can look around and they can't move. Really simple, that's it. The next thing that happens is when our menu is on the screen, we can interact with it. If the player was to hit OK or cancel, I'm basically doing one thing. I am toggling the pause menu. I'm saying, hey, Mr. Controller, who do you control? Hey, who do you control? Use your generic interface and toggle the pause menu if you support it. This is what we have our interface for. Our interface is really simple. It simply has a function called toggle pause menu. And the goal is so that I don't have to do cast to, what did we call it? Simple pause character, cast to simple pause character. And then I'd have to either execute this, turn it into a pure cast, and then do something like that. Having a blueprint interface completely allows me to eliminate my casting. And simply, if it fails, nothing happens. But if it works, we tell it to toggle the pause menu. Now, this part right here, we're actually going to cover once we get done with toggling the pause menu. But very simply, this is going to allow us to pause while we are inside of our widget, which in this case, pausing unhides it and unpauses it. Inside of here, if we were to call our pause menu, all I'm doing is calling the same thing. If you hit the P button or you call the pause menu, we want them to do the same thing. Check to see if our widget's valid. Oh, look, we have a valid widget now. We've gone ahead and put it on our screen. We're good. So let's remove that widget from the screen so we don't see it anymore. Let's go ahead and give our input back to the game mode. We don't want to control the user interface. Hide our mouse cursor. Go ahead and get our pawn again and tell it you can have input back. And then we set the pause menu reference to nothing. This basically destroys our reference, nulls it out, and we now have an invalid reference. So by doing that, and by doing our is valid, and then by creating and setting, we are now having a self-contained loop where our widget will only be valid if something's on the screen and will be invalid if something is not on the screen. It's exactly what we want. The last bit of code here that I told you to go back to is our listen for input action node. This is covered separately, of course, but basically what this does is it allows our widget to listen for an existing input action, which is our pause button action, and then do something. Simple as that. It allows our UMG to respond to key presses. So in this case, when I can, if this was not hooked up, let's go into play. I hit pause. Now if I hit the pause button again, well, nothing happens. I've disabled the input in the player, so the player's doing nothing when I hit the pause button. And the widget isn't actually listening for any input because I unhooked it. So I have to hit my OK or cancel button. And that's fine. If you want to do it like that, well, then you don't hook this up. But standard user experience is if I hit the escape button for my menu, I expect to be able to hit the escape button to close the menu or to back out. So by using this right here with a callback to another event here, we're going to go ahead and be able to simply toggle our pause menu. And that's it. This was just a simple pause menu example. The pause menu is just a widget. That widget can contain any of your options. There is another video on a complete video settings, um, video settings example using only blueprints. That could come up when you hit the pause, for example. And all you'd have to do is tell it to display this when it pulls up. Make sure you have this code hooked up properly. And then make sure your character has this stuff inside of it for listening. Now, personally, because I didn't want to hook up a, another blueprint, I created this inside of our character. The default examples have these controls in the character, so I went ahead and put this inside the character. You may wish to consider doing this all in the controller itself, since this is not really character specific. This would be controller specific. You want your controller, even if they control a zombie or a player or a head crab, you still want them to be able to use the pause menu. So it makes more sense to, for this to be in the controller and it will work fine. But just to keep things clean for my example, I put it inside the player. And that is it. That is actually going to be our simple pause menu concept. We can move around, we can 
P to pause. We can interact with our menu. Our player is not able to move. We can hit OK to close it, and they can move again. Or we can use the P key to pause or unpause. One thing you may wish to consider as a fun thing to try is when we are disabling and enabling our input, since this is a single player game, well, this is a single player example, for example, traditionally, once you pull up a menu, you will pause the game. Really simple, just find the time dilation nodes, which are covered in their own videos, and you could simply add a time dilation node here. You'd set the, uh, basically the rate at which time is running to a very low number, like 0.01. Time will appear to be paused while they're in the menu, and then you can set it back to normal once they get out. So that's an easy way to also pause the game world by when you pull up your menu. And that is it. That is going to be our simple pause menu.